Hey everyone, the article I want to talk about today is from Emission Analytics and it's titled Pollution from Tire Wear 1000 Times Worse Than Exhaust Emissions. And we're going to be talking about that article specifically and then a bunch of spin-off articles that use the Emission Analytics article as their source to make the claim that EVs may be worse off for the environment than traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. So let's read the original article, but before we do, if you appreciate this type of content where I call out the media for their lack of integrity and do my best to get to the truth of the matter, consider subscribing because it's free and it helps me make more of this sort of content in the future. With that out of the way, let's get into the article. I'm not going to read the whole article to you. I highly suggest you give it a read for yourself, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to tackle the main thread, which is that tire wear pollution is 1,000 times worse than tailpipe emissions. Their evidence for this claim is summed up with this sentence in the body of the article. To understand the scale of the problem, Emissions Analytics, the leading independent global testing and data specialist for the scientific measurement of real-world emissions, performed some initial tire wear testing. Using a popular family hatchback running on brand new correctly inflated tires, we found that the car emitted 5.8 grams per kilometer of particles. Compared with regular exhaust emissions limits of 4.5 milligrams per kilometer, the completely unregulated tire wear emissions is higher by a factor of over 1,000. Okay, so I want to tackle this claim that in their tire wear emissions test, a regular hatchback is emitting 5.8 grams per kilometer. Reading that immediately set my alarms off because the number just doesn't sound reasonable to me. So I did some quick napkin math and the claim just doesn't stack up. Let's take a look at this. The average tire for a hatchback or sedan weighs about 12 kilograms, and that's not including the wheel itself, it's just the tire, which is the rubber part. As far as how many kilometers tires can go, the answer varies wildly depending on what type of tire you get, but your average budget tire will last anywhere from 60,000 to 110,000 kilometers. But in order to steel man the article, where basically we put its argument in the best light possible, we'll take the fastest wearing budget tire at a 60,000 kilometer lifespan. For all my standard measurement viewers out there, <laughs> like I am, that's just under 40,000 miles. Okay, so now we have this tire and it weighs 12 kilograms and it's going to last 40,000 kilometers in its life. And the article is saying that in their testing, the tire wear pollution was emitting 5.8 grams per kilometer. If we drove our tires 40,000 kilometers, that would be 232 kilograms of tire pollution, which is 19 times the weight of the tire itself. In the emissions analytics scenario, the tire would be polluting 19 times its own weight, which makes no sense. So if we use their own data, then the tire would have polluted its own weight in just 2,100 kilometers or 1,300 miles. And that's if you were to drive the tire until there's no rubber at all, meaning you'd just be driving on your metal rims. Obviously, you should never drive a tire that much, and you would get new tires long before that. In reality, you really only use up a small fraction of the amount of rubber that's on the tire and replace it when the tread is low. But my point is that there is just no way possible for a tire to pollute what they're claiming it pollutes. You cannot have a tire give off more matter than it has, at least not with our current understanding of physics. And they also said, emissions analytics notes that this could be even higher if the vehicle had tires which were underinflated, or the road surfaces used to test were rougher, or the tires used were from a budget range. All very recognizable scenarios in real world monitoring. So they're saying the 5.8 grams per kilometer is a sort of least polluting scenario and it could get way worse than that. And in that least polluting scenario, the tire runs out of rubber, I mean like all of its rubber, in just 2,100 kilometers. How is that even remotely possible? And just to make sure I'm representing their side as accurately as possible, they do say that non-exhaust emissions are particles released into the air from brake wear, tire wear, road surface wear, and resuspension of road dust during on-road vehicle usage. So there are other factors that also pollute and it's not just tires. But in that particular test, it appears that they are just referring to the tire wear because they classify the 5.8 grams per kilometer as tire wear testing. And I don't see any caveats that say it includes brake wear and road wear. I reached out to Emissions Analytics with my conclusion from their data to see what they thought and if they could offer any clarity. But as of the making of this video, they haven't responded to my questions. If they do respond to my questions, then I'll post their response in a pinned comment at the top of this video. So now I wanna get into how their data, which based off my crude calculations doesn't seem to be anywhere near plausible, is used in the media. They say at the top of the article that increased popularity of SUVs, larger and heavier than standard vehicles, 
exacerbates this problem as does growing sales of heavy EVs and widespread use of budget tires. So this right here is what the media took and ran with. The claim is that tire pollution is 1000 times worse than tailpipe pollution and also the heavier the vehicle, the worse the tire pollution. Therefore, electric vehicles, because of their increased weight, actually pollute significantly more than traditional lighter gas cars. So then you have articles coming out like this one that say, tires, not tailpipe emissions, could be the real pollution problem, study says. With that article concluding, here in the US, we don't really dig small hatchbacks or small cars in general. Instead, bigger and heavier vehicles are the norm, and they're likely contributing to the problem. Not to mention, electric cars aren't perfect either. EVs weigh a lot more than a comparable vehicle, and more weight means more tire wear. And so now we've come full circle with these claims, which are EVs are actually potentially more pollutant than traditional gas cars just through the tire wear and now all these media outlets can put out headlines saying it and using this piece of research as their proof but I haven't seen anyone questioning the findings of that study because for me the conclusion that the emissions analytics study came to doesn't pass the smell test and by that I mean I think a lot of people just by looking at it and doing a quick calculation in their head could see that there is no way that that math adds up I had a math teacher way back in the day teach me something that has been really useful throughout my life and I think a lot of people know the trick, but it was basically that before you perform a calculation, get a ballpark idea of what the number should be just with mental math. And that way, if you do the calculation wrong or hit the wrong button on your calculator or whatever, and it's way off, you can catch your mistake because you already know within reason what your number should be. For me, when I saw the pollution number that they put forward and it seemed ridiculously high because it was 5.8 grams per kilometer, that's a lot of weight every single kilometer. So in my head, I thought, well, I know about how long tires last and I know it can't give off more pollution than it weighs, so I was immediately skeptical. A European Tire and Rubber Manufacturer Association spokesperson when asked about the findings said, our analysis of tire wear rate results of emissions analytics driving tests found that they do not reflect normal driving conditions and go far beyond the toughest realistic driving behavior. The test conditions used a vehicle that was fully loaded with low quality tires. The test design incorporated high speeds and excessive cornering and underscores the unrealistic nature of the driving test and its results with an extreme driving behavior. Now, we need to take this tire spokesperson report with a grain of salt because they obviously have incentives for the tires to be less polluting, but that doesn't necessarily mean what they're saying is wrong. So after both my own analysis of the information and that quote from a tire spokesperson, it seems in my opinion that if the tire wear numbers that they were reporting could be achieved at all, you would really have to be trying to murder those tires. And it's in no way indicative of how a normal person drives your average car. That leads me to my next line of reasoning where now we need to consider what the entity conducting the test has to gain from the results. Now I wanna be very clear. I am in no way saying this is what emissions analytics is doing or has done. Now that I got that out of the way, I was thinking back on something I read about Ford and GM back in the 1960s where allegedly Ford and GM knew about climate change and knew that as automotive manufacturers, their products were playing a role in greenhouse gas emissions. Those companies then allegedly spent loads of money to cast doubt on the global warming consensus. They also spent millions of dollars lobbying against stricter emission standards. Actually, come to think of it, their actions might warrant me making a whole video on the subject because there's a lot to talk about. Let me know if that's something you wanna see. Now, I'm not saying that they're doing this with this article, I'm just thinking out loud. We know that GM, for example, only has around 2% of their fleet made up by EVs, and that Tesla is a concern for all traditional automotive manufacturers. So if we think about a hypothetical, it would be in their best interest if studies showed that actually EVs were worse for the environment than traditional gas cars. That would solve a lot of their problems, at least in the short term. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.